capital known as the Big Apple. Send it in, Big Time. New York City. The streets stay gritty, feel the electricity. New York City. Juice of the concrete jungle. He exploded to the bucket. Energy, aggression, and life. It's taken these teams this far. They've just begun to fight. Big City of life so nice. They said it twice. Where the only way to win is sweat and sacrifice. It's just a state of mind. Everything you need for success, you can find. Rivals from basketball's royalty. But the lawyers in orange and the apple, the intensity is off the chart. In the Big East Championship. Getting into the oh play. my goodness! Attacking the tail. It was the East Coast capital known as the Big Apple. New York City. There are certain things that just say New York City, Times Square, Wall Street, the hustle and bustle and ever-present taxis racing by. And seemingly every march for two decades, Syracuse and Georgetown, two of the Big East elite programs, play on Broadway. Georgetown advanced yesterday by blowing out South Florida. Now they take aim at their arch rivals and recently crowned Big East Player of the Year, Wes Johnson, in the only matchup of ranked teams in the quarterfinals of a conference tournament. Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods continuing with the Big East Championship presented by New York Life. Georgetown and Syracuse meeting for the 13th time at Madison Square Garden. It's the first of four games on day three in the tournament here in New York City. Villanova and Marquette up next at 2 Eastern time. The Wildcats sent the Golden Eagles packing last year. Then tonight, Pittsburgh, Notre Dame, West Virginia, Cincinnati at 9 Eastern after the Bearcats knocked off Louisville. Hi, everybody. With Doris Burke and Fran Priscilla, I'm Dave Pash. Beth Mullins will join us shortly. Well, guys, Syracuse fresh off 28 regular season wins, the most in school history. Only one loss away from the Carrier Dome. That was their last game at Louisville. Mini Field, they're the best team in the country. Oh, they played like it all year. Great chemistry, seven starters. And how about the Big East Player of the Year four years ago was on nobody's recruiting list. Yeah, pretty amazing. Meanwhile, Georgetown, a team that lost twice to Syracuse during the regular season, had some big deficits in those games, but made a comeback in game two. I think in those two losses, they can take solace in this. In the final 10 minutes of the second matchup, they finally found some success against that zone if ever a time for Greg Monroe to impose his will on a game it's today you mentioned West Johnson player of the year Johnson says Andy Routon should have been player of the year in the Big East he's featured in our star watch well five years at Syracuse great experience a high basketball IQ he can shoot the ball but we've seen a great distributor this year and in the zone he's become in my mind one of the best defenders in college basketball Nothing like 50 year seniors for Georgetown. It's predicated on this guy, their sensational sophomore, Greg Monroe. He needs to be assertive because in the three Syracuse losses, or the, the, their losses this season, people have shot a high percentage inside the three point line. And Monroe struggled in one of those games with Syracuse with eight points and six turnovers. Here's the starting five for the Hoyas, who finished 10 and 8 in Big East play during the regular year. Chris Wright, Austin Freeman, Jason Clark. Wright had 15 points yesterday against South Florida. Monroe and Julian Vaughn, who fouled out of that game with the Bulls yesterday, up front. For Syracuse, pretty much the same starting five all year. Andy Rounds and Brandon Trish. Trish, a freshman. Johnson joined by two of the best in the country in terms of field goal percentage. Rick's, Rick Jackson and Arinze Onowaku. Of the 12 previous meetings in the Big East tournament between Syracuse and Georgetown, five have been in the championship game. Georgetown won four in the 80s. Syracuse won one in the 90s. And this quarterfinal matchup underway here at the Garden. Well, you better have a good scheme against this zone, but you also have to make shots. And it helps if you score inside. Here's Freeman, he's never scored in double figures in a Big East tournament game. He's Georgetown's leading scorer on the year. Recently diagnosed as a diabetic, but playing through it. We'll have more on that story as we go along. Here's Vaughn inside, and he walked. Travel on the opening possession. Jim Beheim has won five Big East tournament championships, including back-to-back -back in 2005 and 2006. He's the Big East coach of the year for the fourth time. Syracuse is the one seed this year. They have never won the Big East Tournament title as a one seed. 
Jackson down to Onowaku, and Syracuse turns it over on its first opportunity. Jackson usually a pretty reliable passer. I would try to go at Greg Monroe and Vaughn as much as I could early doors. And all he needed to do was take a one dribble left, and that's his strong hand. He easily could have gotten there. Onowaku with the block on right, and Trish gets to the loose ball. There's the Big East player of the year to the basket with the game's first points. It's the one thing you want to see the guy do more. I mean, he's a sensational jump shooter, but does he put it on the deck enough to balance that jump shot? He's the first transfer from a four-year school to ever win Big East player of the year. He started out at Iowa State. Here's Clark missing the three, rebound on Oahu. There's a good example. The scheme was good. Drive it into the gap, draw two, and kick it. But you have to make shots. Johnson with all five for Syracuse. The guy is silky smooth, and his personality fits perfectly. This is the most unselfish Syracuse team I've seen maybe since I've been watching the Big East, and that's going back to 79-80. Speaking of unselfish, here's Monroe, a terrific passer. John Thompson III says he's the best passer in the country, but they couldn't get a completion down low there. Three games that Syracuse lost this year, team shot 58% inside the arc, but it's hard to do that with Jackson and Anawaku. Great play by Clark, three on one, right to Freeman, and Georgetown on the board. And that's Syracuse's concern coming in. When they're in transition, he is so dangerous, Chris Wright, at pushing pace to get himself or a teammate right at the rim. Saw John Thompson Jr. there. Georgetown has won the most Big East tournament titles with seven. John Thompson Jr. responsible for six. JT3, the current coach, responsible for one. That was an 07. Rotten's pass broken up by Monroe. Here's right on the drive, hanging and scoring. You've got to play the zone from the inside out, and if you can attack it in a semi-transition situation, all the better. Rounds off the screen, coming off maybe his worst game of the year against Louisville. It was just one of nine from the field, but he lit up Georgetown during the regular year and strikes quickly here with a three. So confident, so comfortable. He, he has the air of a fifth-year senior, somebody who's seen it all, been in tough spots, can deliver in those moments. Saw his dad, Leo Rountons, there. Andy hit five threes in an earlier meeting with Georgetown Monroe, trying to get the handle on an eight does. Blocked by Jackson. And here's Rountons now in transition for Syracuse. Vaughn comes over, contact, and the first foul of the game. Now you've got a balanced offensive team in Syracuse and a lot of different places they can come at you with. The Big East Player of the Year on one side of the floor, Wes Johnson, the lift so pretty, that jump shot so pure. Now here's one of the all-time best three-point shooters in Syracuse history. A lot of net on those shots, friend. Well, how about, you know, you think about his dad, who was the 1981 Big East Tournament MVP and a three-time Big East All-Tournament player, and here's his son out on the court with Every bit as good a chance as anybody in this tournament to win that MVP. He is the glue for Syracuse. Here's Johnson already five points. Make it eight. Silky smooth from three-point land. Seven point. Syracuse lead. Dave, you remember when he hurt his hand against UConn? It, uh, that bothered him for a while, but it's certainly not having any effect on that stroke today. And Syracuse is a team four out of four. They're the best shooting team in college basketball. Good hands by Onowaku, but Wright is there to clean it up and stick it in. Wright with four of the six for Georgetown. Good hands by Monroe. Freeman for three. And over the backboard, it'll go to Syracuse. A hot start for the number one seed at the Big East Tournament. Wes Johnson with eight of the 11 points for Syracuse. Five-point lead for the Orange early here in New York City. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by New York Life, helping keep your family safe and secure, and in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And VW, with 13 different models, it's a whole new Volkswagen and a whole new game. Back in New York City, Syracuse with an early five-point lead on Georgetown. Dave Pass with Doris Burke, Fran Fraschilla. Now here's the fourth member of our crew, Beth Mullins. Well, Dave, Brandon, Trish, and Andy Rounds have been a part of this Syracuse-Georgetown rivalry their whole lives. They grew up going to Syracuse games in the Dome against the Hoyas. I had a chance to talk to Andy before the game, and he talked about what a privilege it was to be a second-generation Orange, although he still questions whether or not his dad, Leo, actually dunked on Patrick Ewing, as his father claims. <laughs> and while Brandon, Trish, guys with a wry smile and the innocence of a freshman, simply says, I'm 2-0 and against them. It's not a rivalry until they beat us. <laughs> that was off West Johnson's leg and, and Beth Howard Trish uh, Brandon's uncle was a part of that 1987 team that made it all the way to the championship game before losing on Keith Smart's shot for Indiana. They'd like to see that young man get going. He struggled in the last four games just 15 minutes per and only, only three points. Got a Syracuse foul. That's the first foul on the Orange here in the game. They'll get Rick Jackson. I thought the team that attacked that Syracuse zone the best this year, Doris. Obviously, Louisville beat them twice, but they were able to get the ball to the paint with Samuels and Swapshire and then turn and face the basket because that really sucks the defense in and it allows those kick out threes. I'd like to see Greg Monroe catch it and look inside. Well, interestingly, you have Chris Wright right now on the baseline, running side to side. They're looking for the overload. There it is, but catch and square. And Monroe does that. And again, very good pass around with a high post and a pretty move there for Greg Monroe. The criticism of this young man is, is he passionate enough? Does each possession matter enough? I think he needs to be assertive today. I want to see him try to impose his will. He has the skill to dominate this matchup. He cannot be passive walking around against that zone. First team all Big East performer. Arizona Waku with Monroe defending. And now Jackson out to runs. He'll try another three. Off the mark there. And a strong board by Monroe. See, it's not enough just to catch the ball in the high post. You've got to turn and face. There you go. And there Monroe is. makes a great pass. And Clark with a finish. Got Georgetown within one. So the entry pass to the post and an aggressive move and a couple of scores at the rim against the zone by Georgetown. Huge. Unforced error there by Syracuse. They've already got a handful of turnovers here in the first half. Make that six they turnovers. Take a look at this now, guys. If they, as he turns and faces, if he's one on one, he can go ahead and just take it. See, he's looking and evaluating. He'll eventually drive the ball. And then but that's where he's going to be a really good facilitator, right in that post. But you must turn and look at the basket. Here's Jarrell Benneman who played 24 minutes against South Florida because Julian Vaughn was in foul trouble. And Georgetown and Syracuse, neither team goes to its bench very often. Chris Joseph is a very good player off the bench. In fact, he was the sixth man of the year in the Big East, but otherwise you will not see guys off the bench for either side that get a ton of minutes or a ton of points. Scoop Jardine will play some and had a really good year for Syracuse. That's about it. Jim Bam says they've got seven starters. Well, what you love about Syracuse, Dave, is nobody heavily recruited. The three top 20 players from a year ago left, and that's addition by subtraction. And a jumper by Freeman, and Georgetown's got the lead. Again, the overload. They're putting a lot of blue jerseys on one side of the zone and operating from there. What we haven't seen yet from Syracuse is the trapping part of their defense. Johnson, no. Rebound right. Georgetown looking to extend an 8-0 run. Right drives past three defenders and got stripped. Two on two, runs with a pull up, Jay missed the three. Cleared by Freeman, and two players hit the deck. They're gonna get Georgetown for a foul. Benneman pulled Joseph down. 
First on him, first on Georgetown as a team. Take a look at this now. Watch him turn and face. He's evaluating. There's the cutter to the rim. And if you're going to beat that zone, you are not beating it from the three-point line. You're beating it from inside. Well, and interestingly, Georgetown is sending a guard, whether it's Shane Clark or whether it's Chris Wright, and they're running back and forth along the baseline. An interesting tactic. Well, what I like about it is those are their best scorers, the three perimeter guys. Great pass by Joseph Jackson. Missed an easy one. He usually makes those. You want to put your playmakers, your best playmakers, in positions to score, and that's an excellent adjustment by Georgetown. Watch how active those guards' hands are. This is a longer zone than a year ago. Well, it's a more committed zone. Yeah, uh, a year right. ago, Devendorf and Flynn really weren't committed to the zone and didn't work very hard defensively. <laughs> That's changed. Throw Paul Harrison that mix as well as right misses a three. Rebound by Clark. A oh, great pass and a basket by Hollis Thompson. We got to get the paint points because right now, Georgetown getting inside that lane and scoring against one of the best defenses. The two schools with the most career Big East tournament wins squaring off in a quarterfinal. Georgetown and Syracuse meeting for the 13th time here at the Garden at the Big East tournament. And the Hoyas off to a great start with a three-point lead. They lost to Syracuse twice during the regular year. The only team to beat John Thompson the third three times in one season was UConn back in 2005. Jardine with the entry pass. Johnson fouled by Thompson, his first. And the third foul on the Hoyas. One of the. So three point Georgetown lead. Fran up next. We'll look back to the greatest game in tournament history. Give you a hint, it took place last year. Simply the greatest game in Big East tournament history. Syracuse beating Connecticut last year in six overtimes. In the quarterfinals, by the way, took three hours and 46 minutes. Went till about 1.30 in the morning, Eastern time. And Syracuse the next night played an overtime game, beat West Virginia, then eventually lost to Louisville in the Big East Championship game. I like Rat's great mind. It's the latest he ever got home from New York City without getting in trouble from his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Syracuse has missed its last four. Jackson had trouble with the pass from Johnson. Look at Georgetown just fly to the ball. And Clark rips it away. Here's Clark on the other end. Too strong. And Jackson able to clear. Jardine to the corner. Joseph nails a three. Wow. Not necessarily Chris Joseph's strength. Only 21% on the air. More of a driver and attacker. Only his eighth made three. The fourth for Syracuse already. Georgetown 7 of 10 inside the arc. That's where they have to go with the ball. Here's White at the high post. One dribble and then finds Clark, and he cannot find it from out there so far. Jardine finds Robinson in transition. Hit Two threes for Andy Routens. It's all season long, Andy Routens has just been locked in. There's been a seriousness about his approach. I talked to him before the game. I said, hey, they did some good things against your zone. He said, we've made adjustments. Chris Wright with the answer. Boys, he played well so far at the Big East Tournament. Well, that's their first three of the night. Oh, nice move by Jardine to the basket, averaging 15 per game over his last three. Scoop Jardine missed last season with a stress fracture. He redshirted. He's a third-year sophomore, and he learned a lot sitting next to Jim Beheim a year ago. Well, that's the thing about the Syracuse team. Unselfish, motivated, and old. They're experienced, and that will help immensely in this kind of environment. And a great move to the basket. There he is again, using the bounce and getting to the rim. Syracuse quickly down floor. Chris 
Joseph, sixth man of the year in the Big East, had been playing with a sore knee, but he looks healthy today. Beautiful move. He's got five points and stares right at Fran and Doris. Not me, <laughs> just the two of you as he ran by. How about the visual we had going to break? The normally cerebral, such a cool, calculated guy, John Thompson, third, tears his guys up, and they respond with a bucket immediately. How about Monroe with the pass again? Oh, yeah, nine baskets now inside the lane. Remember, in the three losses, teams that beat Syracuse only shot 33% behind the arc. Rottens knew it was off, and that's why he got the rebound. Not a walk -in inside. He'll go to the line. Not a bad foul. It doesn't go in because he's a horrible free throw shooter. Well, he's as visually demonstrative JT3 today as I've seen him. Uh, big Papa in the house. Uh, you, you more associate the opposing personality of John Thompson with his father. He's up and down the sidelines. He ripped his guys in that timeout. Friend, I, I've never seen him like this. You don't expect that from an Ivy Leaguer, do you? <laughs> <He's right. laughs> Remember who they're playing, though. That's right. Especially with John Jr. here. Oh, this no. rivalry goes back a long way, especially here at the Garden. Back to the 1984 game, Michael Graham, as that one bricks in. And the alleged punch thrown when Jim Bam after the game said the better team lost. And it was Syracuse that lost to John Thompson's Hoyas back in 84. Now what made this league go in the 80s was the great coaching personalities. Louie and Rowley, John Thompson. Freeman not even close with that three-point try. Here's Jardine off the dribble. Boy, is he improved. Confidence. In fact, in the summertime, Jim Beheim was clear that Brandon Trish would be the starter. It didn't have to sit well with Jardine, but it hasn't affected his play at all. Monroe, another terrific pass, but Benjamin blew the layup. Here's Routens on the drive, finds Johnson along the baseline, contact, no call. Johnson hit it anyway. He's got 10. He's scoring from different spots. They're moving him around. We've seen him shoot a perimeter jump shot. We've seen him go off the dribble from about the elbow area. We've seen him post him up. He is a talented offensive player. That started with an Andy Rott, Routens shot fake, Doris. Hollis Thompson way off. Georgetown really struggling from three-point land. Jardine leaves for Routens. Tried to get it back to him. Thompson with a great save. Here's Wright. Challenged by Joseph and a foul. And Joseph hits the deck. You like him? First foul on Joseph, second on Syracuse. Again, Joseph has been battling a sore knee, and that won't help. Well, in big games, Dave, you'd expect the league's player of the year to step up, and Wesley Johnson has certainly done that early. He knows what's at stake. But anytime you talk Georgetown Syracuse, you better put your hard hat on, buddy, because they're getting after it. Alan Griffin and Jason Hart were on the Syracuse team in 2000. It was a one seed and lost to Georgetown in the quarterfinals. Right now, the Orange with a five point lead on the Hoyas. Greg Monroe having a terrific first half of the Georgetown team. Every time they get into the paint, they're eight for 12 there, two for nine from the perimeter. He is their facilitator. He is the guy they want to enter the basketball to, to score himself or to find his teammates. Fran, when he imposes his will, when he looks to do this, be the guy who sets the other guys around him and is aggressive and assertive. They're a different team. Well, I agree, Doris. And when you see this zone, as vaunted as it's been, there's the numbers. They don't lie. You cannot shoot Syracuse out of the zone from behind the arc. It's got to be done from the paint, from inside out, transition layups. And you're exactly right about Greg Monroe. He's such a threat when he catches the ball. Chris Wright, who leads the Hoyas so far in this game, is seven points at the free throw line. Chris Joseph on the foul went hard to the deck, but he's still out there right now. So their success is predicated either in transition 
or, or entry into that painted area. And philosophically, Fran, Syracuse, they look to take away the two best shooters, and they want that third best shooter to be the, the guy taking the shots. Good job by Johnson to find Onawaka who couldn't finish. Monroe may have had something to do with that. Here's Clark. I'll tell you what, Dave, Georgetown is sneaky long at a number of different spots. Obviously, Monroe, they've gotten a lot of hands on Syracuse passes today and have disrupted some shots. Henry Sims out there at 6 feet 11. He's in the high post right now for the Hoyas. Raymond, loose ball. Joseph's got it. Syracuse the one seed, Georgetown the eighth seed here at the Big East Championship. Jardine hit a three. Syracuse on fire from behind the arc. That's what Jim Beheim means when he says seven starters. Joseph and Jardine are like two guys. They're going to be all league players a year from now, Doris. Brandon Trish can struggle as long as Jardine plays like that. How about Johnson way up there for the block? Wright, though, puts it in. And Chris Wright gets the Hoyas back within four. That's 11 now for Wright here in the first half. Syracuse, meanwhile, six three-point field goals, five from inside the arc. On a walk with a catch and score on Monroe. Now he only shoots 65% from the field for his entire career. Another one of those guys that was under recruited. He was a football player in high school at Episcopal in Northern Virginia. He's number one all time in field goal percentage at Syracuse on Oahu. Another of those uh, veterans that Doris was talking about, another fifth year guy like Andy Routens. Here's Jardine, a third year sophomore, and he's fouled on the way to the hoop. Winner of this game moves on to the semifinals tomorrow night on ESPN to play either Villanova or Marquette. That's our next game here at the Garden. Then tonight, Pitt, Notre Dame, West Virginia, Cincinnati. Bearcats with a big win over Louisville, and they certainly have talent. That'll be an interesting game against the Mountaineers at 9 Eastern. Cincinnati, the first team since they've gone to this format where you have all 16 teams here to win on Tuesday and Wednesday. Hey, two weeks ago down in Morgantown, Cincinnati led 15 in the first half and couldn't get the job done, but they certainly can play with Bob Huggins club. Getting it back is Johnson after the missed free throw. And Syracuse has opened up a nine-point lead. That length helps as much on the offensive end with tip basketballs as it does on this side of the basketball. Just keep your eye on Andy Routens and Jardine. That's a good look inside. Another assist for Monroe. His third is right now has 13 points. If I'm Georgetown right now, I only shoot the three as a last resort. Jackson with a catch. Spins out. Freeman clears. You might put in a rule today, friend, that unless the ball enters the post area, you don't shoot a three if you're Georgetown. Here's right. He'll let it fly way off of the three to I, your point. I used to have a rule that if we missed two or three jumpers in a row, the next one had to go inside. Johnson tried to get it to Jackson, turned it over. Nine Syracuse turnovers, yet a seven-point lead. Here's Clark from the corner. Finally, Georgetown with a triple. Only their second of the half. Time out on the floor of the, as the Hoyas are back within four. Well, that defense has been so vaunted all year, and you cannot live and die with just jump shots. Hoyas are very effective playing their offense through Monroe. See the great look on the cut. But eventually, we know that Georgetown has a couple guys, Doris, that can light it up. It's just got to be within the rhythm of the offense. 
Jim Bam unhappy that nobody rotated over to the corner there to get Clark, who's one of the best three-point shooters in the league. Well, let's credit the Georgetown staff. They're, they're overloading. They've decided to run a guard on the backside of that defense. They were joking amongst themselves because they had success in the final 10 minutes. They said, we wish we could have figured it out a little bit sooner. <laughs> Might have come away with one of those wins. But remember when, when Temple's zone was so good with John Chaney? I know Phil Martelli used to say you had to make 10 threes against that. I, mean, I do think you've got to go inside, but you're also going to have to make some jump shots against well, Syracuse. If you, if you think at the three losses this year, Ashton Gibbs had 24. Mike Mara had a career high four threes. And then last Saturday, Kyle Kirk knocked down six. So it does help if you have a guy that can snipe that zone. Rollins throws it away. Syracuse with 10 turnovers. Two of Syracuse's three losses were at home to Louisville and Pitt. And then the road loss that you guys talked about at Freedom Hall in the final game at Freedom Hall. Clark, the wide open look. Nobody yep. got the space, and he nails it. And Chris Wright is not only scoring, he's finding people. That's a great wrinkle out of the timeout. They have an offense, Doris, where they've always put a guard in the high post, so they made an adjustment, and it paid off. Clark hit four threes yesterday in the win over South Florida. Jardine mid-range J. Out to Routens. Jackson wide open underneath. Routens finds him and Jackson puts it home. And he likes to be called the trash man. He doesn't mind taking out the garbage. He's developed into an excellent role player. See, there's that guard in the middle now. This is another zone offense they've had. Row out of the game right now for the Hoyas. Right into the paint, rising short. Out to Freeman. Clark lost it. Routens called for the foul. Only the third on Syracuse, his first. Got a timeout. Georgetown back within three, and the Hoyas getting back with three point hoops, two by Jason Clark here in the first half of this Big East quarterfinal matchup at MSG. All right, John, here's a look at the ACC tournament bracket. The game you'll see tonight, 7 Eastern on ESPN2. North Carolina, Georgia Tech. Duke plays tomorrow at noon on ESPN2. Virginia Tech, 2. Maryland at 7 Eastern tomorrow, followed by Florida State against either Clemson or NC State. ESPN2, 9 Eastern tomorrow. Here, Syracuse and Georgetown in a three-point game. Right now, the story has been Syracuse's turnovers, 10, leading to 16 Hoya points. Well, what I like about Georgetown's attack today is they're shooting 65% inside the arc, 11 of 17, and they've had, Doris, a really good game plan of putting different people in position to catch that ball in the middle of the lane. Just a correction, there was no foul called on Routens. They said that he touched it last and on the ball in the near sideline. And an air ball there by Freeman. Great drive by Trish, but Monroe steps in and takes the charge. First on Trish, third on Syracuse. It's the one area where you don't mind a charge call that close to the rim. When it's baseline to baseline, this is where a little bit more comfortable. He's going to just get himself over, get himself set. And you see in the NBA, they've got that semi-circle, but in college, that line has not gone in yet. I've talked to John Adams, head of uh, NCAA officiating, and wouldn't be surprised in the next year or two that we go to that line as well in the college game. So Howard Trish, Brandon's uncle, watching from the stands as the Hoyas are now within one. Raymond's got eight points. Not to belabor the point, but that's the 12th field goal for Georgetown against what's supposed to be a vaunted zone defense inside the paint today. Jardine way off. Wright's got it. Three on two for the Hoyas. Wright lost it. Jackson. Jardine makes a great catch and score with the left hand. Points now for Scoop Jardine here in the first half. Coming off a 20-point effort in the loss at Louisville. 
Here's Monroe spinning on Jackson. The follow won't go by Thompson, but he'll go to the line. Fourth team foul on Syracuse. Uh, one of those long passes that could go either way. It's like the defensive back versus the receiver, and Jardine makes the play and gets the bucket. Well, don't don't give new uh, Syracuse coach Doug Marone any ideas, Doris. <laughs> it was fun when we were up at the Dome a couple weeks ago seeing Greg Paulus, the former great Duke point guard. And Played quarterback this year as a 50-year senior. There's a fifth, speaking of 50-year seniors. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember after Andy Routon's sophomore year, he played for the Canadian national team, played for his dad, and that's when he hurt his knee, missed the entire third year of his career. And talk about the ability to sit on the bench for a whole year like Jardine, Routon's, and how much the game slows down for you when you watch it from the sideline. Well, the other thing he did was he, that allowed him a year to, to mature physically, and he changed his body as a result of his conditioning. So it helped in a lot of ways, physically as much as mentally. Chris Joseph staying on the floor despite two fouls. Johnson can't put it in. Joseph does. That's why he's still out there with two fouls. Now the reason I like Joseph when he comes off the bench is he's a completely different type player. He, he wants to get off the dribble drive more than Johnson. So you have to adjust your mindset defensively. About a 13 second difference between game and shot clocks. See if Monroe gets a touch here on this possession. Clark facing the double team, threw it away. Here's Johnson. And Freeman fouled him. He had a foul to give. Sixteen foul and the first on Austin Freeman. And that was a smart foul, too. Not intentional. He grabbed for the ball. I don't know if Austin Freeman realized that they had the foul to give, but he just saved two points. Freeman recently diagnosed as a diabetic. They've got the head of the Georgetown Diabetes Center, Dr. Stephen Clement, on the Georgetown bench, along with the trainer, Lori Michael. They will monitor his blood sugar. He is taking insulin, but they have not officially diagnosed whether it's type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Shot clock off, 10 seconds remaining in the half. Syracuse by three. Joseph. Drives and try to hit Jackson. It was last touch by Monroe with 2.3 left. Well, in that second game, when Joseph had the big basket at the end of the game, they let him get to his right. That was good scouting report defense right there, forcing Joseph back to his left. Here's Johnson, got it away. Good defense. And the half ends. Terrific first half, and no surprise in the 13th meeting between Georgetown and Syracuse at the Big East Tournament. The Hoyas with 18 points off of those 11 turnovers by Syracuse. 12 points for Wes Johnson, 10 points for Scoop Jardine. Chris Wright at 13 to lead all scores. Syracuse leads Georgetown and Greg Monroe by three at the half. It's time now for the Cisco Halftime Report. John Saunders, Doug Gottlieb, and Jay Williams. Welcome to the Pressure Dome. Big city of light, so nice. They said it twice. They don't need any wind, sweat, and sacrifice. At a fast pace. At a fast pace. At a fast pace. It's just a state of war. We welcome you back to Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. It's the 2010 Big East Championship presented by New York Life. Thirteenth meeting at the Big East Championship between Syracuse and Georgetown. And the Orange, despite shooting almost 60% from the field, only with a three-point lead. Dave Pash, Doris Burton, Fran Priscilla, Beth Moen's here as well. Why is Syracuse only leading by three, shooting 59%? Simple answer, 11 turnovers. They either scored or turned it over. They were very efficient. I think if you're Georgetown, that concerns you. Yeah, the Hoyas uh, in that first half, able to get the ball inside and make the most off of those Syracuse turnovers by getting some good looks. Very important when you beat Syracuse's zone, and they've lost three times this year, opponents have shot 58% inside the arc, and a very effective game plan by Georgetown because Greg Monroe is so multifaceted in terms of his ability to score or pass it inside. And there, guys, you see John Thompson's game plan, get the ball to the lane. It's been a effective in the first half. 
Leading scores were the only two guys who played 20 minutes in that first half. Chris Wright for Georgetown with 13. Wes Johnson for Syracuse with 12. Here's Robbins, who was two of five from the field, all three-point tries. All inside on Vaughn. Our first half stats brought to you by New York Life. See the turnovers as a big story and the points off turnovers for Georgetown. And no surprise that Syracuse's bench is outscoring Georgetown. Most of those by Scoop Jardine. He had 10 in the first half. And Georgetown opens its zone. Wes Johnson starting the second half like he did the first. He had eight quick ones to start the first half. Got 15 now for the game. It's hard to contest his shot because he gets his release point is so high, but you've got to be a heck of a lot closer, and hands have got to be up. I think they caught uh, Georgetown by surprise shooting it so quickly versus his own. And a Syracuse foul on Wes Johnson. Only his first. And this is exactly what they did in the, in the first half. Their first four shots they made. They had eight possessions in the first half. The first eight, they had four turnovers and four made field goals. And they were quick shot opportunities. So I don't think it should have taken them by surprise. Winner of this game advances to the semifinals of the Big East Championship to play either Villanova or Marquette. That's our next game here on ESPN. Clark hit a couple threes in the first half. And he'll get the long rebound after the miss. Trish knocked it out of bounds. It'll stay Hoya basketball. One little adjustment to keep an eye on. They brought Jackson up to the high post, and they played Greg Monroe man to man. Now that'll contract the defense inside, and Georgetown should get more open jumpers. Keep your eye on Anawaku now and Monroe. Syracuse beat Georgetown twice during the regular season, had a 23-point lead in Game 2 in D.C. The Hoyas rallied, and they played the Orange tight ever since. They're back within four after that Vaughn jumper. Guess who just got another assist? And that's four now for Monroe. Johnson on the drive. Pretty move by the Big East Player of the Year. He's got 17. And what made that effective was the drive by Routens. He knew which side the defender would be closing on. He just took a dribble in the opposite direction, and everybody was scrambling. That's just smart basketball by a fifth-year senior. Now watch Routens and Trisha. They were so active at the top of that zone. Monroe finds Wright in the corner, and Wright hits a three. If you're going to play Greg Monroe man to man up at the top of the key, the forwards have to cover the rim, and that's going to open up the corners. Johnson, terrific athlete up high for the catch. Good hands by Austin Freeman. He's got Clark ahead of him, and Routon's one of the Big East leaders in steals. Got a hand on it, knocked it out of bounds. Boy, Andy Routens, I don't know if a zone defender has ever been the Big East Defensive Player of the Year, and Hamadi Njai from Rutgers certainly deserved it, but Andy Routens causes havoc at the top of that zone. Monroe able to split the double team and make another great pass to Vaughn inside. Georgetown down one. They're playing Monroe man-to-man -man right now, and that's not been effective so far. Wait, did he get away with a walk on? I felt like he had happy feet on that catch. Johnson. Short. Good play by Jackson. Extra opportunity here for Syracuse on this possession. Double team comes to Trish. That leaves Rottens open. Third three for Andy Rottens. He's a 40% career shooter at the Big East Championship from three-point land, Andy Routens. Including those six big ones last year in that six-overtime game. Good job by Trish to deny Clark, and then Clark got open. The double team comes on him, and a timeout called by Georgetown. I believe the Hoyas with two. Syracuse by four over Georgetown here at Madison Square Garden. First of four games today at MSG.
Syracuse fresh off its first outright Biggie. Biggie's regular season title since 1991. The one seed at the Biggie's championship. They never won the title as a one seed. They've got a four point lead early second half on Georgetown. Well inside the play Andy Routens has a field. This initial look is for him to get a stagger screen. But he's going to feel the defender Shane Clark behind him. So on the catch he knows which way Clark is coming. He knows he's going to have to close hard to get to his shooting hand. He takes him opposite. And Austin Freeman falls down on the job, Fran, because he doesn't hedge very well and try to cut off that dribble drive. And then he loses his man, Wes Johnson. But this is the area where I think Andy's really developed his, his ball skills off the dribble for himself or his teammates. Well, it happens naturally because when you're such a good shooter, you're going to get that intense pressure on the closeout. Freeman's three spins out. And Routens tapped it to Joseph. Here's Routens on the other yeah. end, all the way to the basket with the left hand. Well, you think if he's going to be such a good passer, they've got to play the pass now. That time he got all the way to the rim. Monroe held by Rick Jackson. That's two on him, two on Syracuse in the half. Syracuse with a six point lead on Georgetown. Andy Routens with 11 points and a handful of assists for the Orange. 26 years ago yesterday, Georgetown and Syracuse met in the Big East Championship game. Tempers flare. Michael Graham, Andre Hawkins stirring it up. But Georgetown would end up winning in overtime, 82-71. Jim Beheim afterwards said the better team lost that day. Patrick Ewing was named tournament MVP. Georgetown with seven Big East tournament titles. Four times they have beaten Syracuse, all in the 80s. The Orange beat him in 92. Assistant coach Mike Hopkins was a player on that team. 13th meeting in the Big East championship. We could see Syracuse Villanova or Georgetown Villanova, depending what the Wildcats do next with Marquette coming up to Eastern on ESPN. You see that matchup inside. Jackson and Monroe. Good job by Jackson. Monroe along the baseline. Spin. Lost it. And hands off for Benjamin. Shot clock down to six, three seconds. They had 14 guys in the lane there. <laughs> Which Bayon is up and off the bench, and he had both hands up with five fingers. I think you're saying 10 <laughs> seconds. Forget about three seconds. <laughs> 34th year for Jim Bayheim, 827 wins. Second among active coaches behind Mike Krzyzewski. Routens lost it. What they say was touched last by Georgetown. This is tricky now for Georgetown if they're going to sit in that zone because Andy Routon is, and Routon's has proven not only to be a great shooter but a great guy in terms of driving those gaps. Good save by Bart Jardine. Yeah. What a pass by Routon's to Jackson. Eight points, Syracuse lead. You got to pick your poison right now if you're Georgetown because Syracuse, when they don't turn it over, Doris has called up that defense. That, that kind of pass to me is inexcusable. I mean, that went a long way to get to the heart of that defense. How can you make a pass through the middle of the paint? And completed is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, either the ball pressure's got to be better or more awareness. Clark got contact. Three-point opportunity for Jason Clark. Watch Andy Routens. We talk about all the things he does well. What a great delivery right behind Greg Monroe. And Greg Monroe should have been alert with that wingspan. And Doris, this is the 17th basket inside the arc today on 22 attempts for the Hoyas. Somewhere Bobby Knight is watching that and saying that up fakes the most effective tool in basketball. Two white jerseys go flying in the air. Clark a 76% free throw shooter but missed. Ball was on Johnson a second. Here's Jardine on the other end. Another terrific five by Rockies. Interestingly, the Sporting News had Scoop Jardine as the sixth man of the year in the Big East. They refused to give it to, <laughs> to Chris Joseph because he said, how can you have a guy who's third on the team in minutes be your sixth man of the year? Thus, the seven starters. 
But it was Joseph who won that award. Wes Johnson was the player of the year. And Jim Bay on the coach of the year. And the Big East might be the national coach of the year. Right, Miss Byron Thompson keeping it alive. Tipped in by Clark. 12 points now for Jason Clark. Averaged 10 per game during the regular season. Only five points per game last year. Here's Robbins. He'll let it fly. Got the three. Robbins taking over here in the second half. Listen, guys, Wesley Johnson may be the Big East player of the year. Andy Rountons is the most important player on any team in the country for his team's success. Big answer by Hollis Thompson, a freshman from three-point land. I think Wes Johnson can wow you with the eye test, but coaches appreciate the value of players, and Jim Beheim would concur. There was a stretch of this year where he said, the most valuable player on my team, without question, is Andy Rountons. The injury in 2008 bounced back and has been outstanding since. Well, the dribble drive right to the 10. Nobody stops him, so he goes right after it. Wisely sees that Greg Monroe has got low hands, allowing that pass to get all the way through the zone, and we've seen that. So, man, this is what he came into the orange with, that ability to stroke the perimeter jump shot. Oh, and how about what he does on the defensive end in that zone? 6'5". This is a longer defense than a year ago, and it's very active out top because of Andy Routon. This is a guy that was not heavily recruited. In fact, the only other major scholarship was offered by Providence College because Tim Welsh, the coach there at that time, had been a Jim Beheim assistant and knew Janesville DeWitt High School pretty well. There's we could have used a defender like Andy <laughs> Routon. Sure could have. <laughs> and if they're looking to see if that was a three, if it is, if it remains a three, that would tie Jerry McNamara for the most threes in a it is a three. They're looking at a Georgetown basket to see whether it was a two or three from the corner for Thompson, but just to finish that point, if that's... So Routon's now with 107 threes this year. That ties McNamara for the single-season school record. Jerry currently a grad assistant. And maybe more importantly, Routon's has scored or assisted on all of Syracuse field goals this half. As you see Thompson... Oh, that's good. That'll be good. That's clearly behind the line. Have you noticed in these games, I was talking about this before the game, a lot of the players in transition, they're sprinting to the second line, which is the NBA line. Doris. Now listen. Come on, you know why they do that. <laughs> you got NBA scouts here, and they want to show those guys they've got that NBA range. They know where the lines are. <laughs> I coach some of these guys. <laughs> Former Nick coach Pat Riley, current uh, president of the Miami Heat here, along with a lot of other scouts, watching some great players here in the Big East. Now that would be a good play if they make that a four-point play. Good block by Monroe. And on the jump ball situation, it will go to the Hoyas on the possession area. Been impressed today with Greg Monroe's length. He's gotten some deflections in here. Watch him just wall off the rim with good verticality. NBA will pay a lot of money for that kind of rim protection. <laughs> Freeman able to get to the basket, can't kiss it home. Here comes Jardine. Joseph, he's oh, yeah. so good out the dribble getting to the basket. And particularly to the right hand. That's his strength. That's where he beat Georgetown in that second game, late in the game. Ability to go right. Freeman to right, beautiful. Georgetown back within six. Chris Wright now with 18 points to lead the Hoyas. Wes Johnson has 17 to top Syracuse. Jackson on Monroe. Georgetown ball. Here's Clark. Way to the basket. We'll see if they rule it a shooting foul or not. It'll be a two shot foul. Syracuse by six over Georgetown. Back to New York City in a moment. Carolina, Georgia Tech, 7 Eastern ESPN 2. Here, Syracuse on top of Georgetown by six, two of the top four teams in field goal percentage. But, guys, is ridiculous. Georgetown shooting 64% in the second half, Syracuse shooting 80% from the field. 
Well, Syracuse doesn't turn the ball over today. They've gotten just about any good shot they've wanted. That's been a season-long theme. Usually your field goal percentage is a product of the quality of shots. John Thompson was asked before the game, John Thompson third asked before the game, you know, sort of this the challenge. He said, we don't have to bring our A game. We have to bring our A plus game. He said, we need to play near flawless basketball in order to beat this team. No, he thinks Syracuse is the best team in the country. In fact, at one point this year said it's the best team in the Big East by far, not even close. We'll see in this Big East championship. The Orange have never won when seeded number one. They've been to two title games but lost both those. Great strip by Chris Wright. Georgetown with numbers if they hurry. Wright got caught in the air but still found the open man and Clark hit a three. Seven straight by the Hoyas to get within one. There's Joseph going to his right but he missed. Georgetown looking to take the lead right to Freeman, and he's fouled. Again, we'll see if they roll it a shooting foul or not. He ended up passing at the end. You can see why the first person Syracuse talked about today is Chris Wright. He makes a play on the defensive end, gets out into transition. Really, I thought missed Clark initially, but he had the step, but he sprints to the three-point line and delivers it. I was on. Onowaku is first. And fifth on Jim Beheim's team. And it was not a shooting foul. No Clark, who's had one of the best games of his career. 17 points will inbound for the Hoyas looking to take the lead. We've seen that a lot, them just throw it into the backcourt. Off the inbounds. Play. Well, you've seen Syracuse too many times steal those long passes with all of the, the long defenders out at the front of that zone. Right. And here's Thompson. Jackson with the board. Here's Routens. Long three. Not there. Here comes Wright for the Hoyas. And how about V. Sanford, a freshman from Lexington, Kentucky, giving the Hoyas their first lead since midway through the first half. Chris Wright has been sensational in terms of decision making. And this time, the freshman off the bench, I'd say hot off the bench, but how could that be? It's a floater in Madison Square Garden. The veterans chest pump them. Well, you've got Sanford and Thompson, two freshmen on a Georgetown bench that is the lowest scoring in the country that have had some huge shots here in the second half. John Thompson the third has not lost to an opponent three times in one year since 2005. There's his father, John Thompson Jr. Sally Jenkins wrote a piece in today's Washington Post thinking that they were too passive against South Florida, and she questioned whether or not it stemmed from the head coach. He's been anything but passive over there on the sideline. Rotten's a quick fire. Rick the three that time. Boy, that's confidence, but I think you can get a better one out of the timeout. Georgetown has done a terrific job today of staying away from the three as long as it's, as it's come within the flow of the offense. They have killed Syracuse in the lane. Chris Wright has played great, huh? The whole game managing the offense. Oh, great. Gotten into the lane at the right time. Although forced that one, did touch Syracuse last, three to shoot. That's called the play-by-play -play jinx. <laughs> Forget free throws. <laughs> That's why I say this guy is their barometer. I, he is a sensational player. There are times where he makes that kind of play where you go, uh-oh, <laughs> which first right we got? Right, got rid of it in time, gets the bounce. 20 points for Chris Wright. He averages 14. Routens intercepted by Thompson and then good play by Johnson to get it back. John Thompson the third is wild calling for a foul. 
Jardine, no. That was three on three. Maybe not the shot Jim Beheim wanted. See, three on three to me with Jardine's ability to get to the rim. That's like open ice in hockey. He had a chance to go all the way to the rim and attack. Right, getting to the rim. And a Syracuse foul. If that's Johnson, it's number three. Third personal on Wes Johnson, the 16th foul for Syracuse, only one by Georgetown here in the half. Chris Wright, a 77% free throw shooter, will go to the line for two. In the game at Syracuse, Wright struggled, had just seven points, but in the contest played in D.C., he put up 20 and had five steals. Well, the Georgetown notes early in the year talked about their record when Chris Wright got into double digits, and I think it goes beyond that. I think it goes to his decision-making. He's the one guy who's going to push the pace and get them early transition opportunities at the rim for himself or other guys. It's always about his decision-making. In the half court, it's not as important, Fran, because yeah. of the way it's a product of the offense. Well, I think because of his ability to get to the rim, he creates scoring opportunities so that they don't have to rely on just shooting threes. In the first Georgetown-Syracuse game, that 14-0 run to start the game for the Hoyas was fool's gold because Austin Freeman hit three threes and they got away from attacking inside. They're on a 13-0 run now, and then Greg Monroe picking up a foul inside, only the second team foul on Georgetown, first personal on Monroe. Well, the Hoyas are 10-8 in league play during the regular season. It's a little misleading, though, because of their ridiculous league schedule. Two games against the Cuse, two against Villanova, at West Virginia, at Marquette, at Pitt, at Louisville. Jackson, no, Rotten, or make that Johnson with the follow. 19 for West Johnson. I think he likes playing in the guard. There's a breakout moment early in the year. I remember Dan Schulman's call is saying a star in the making. The Knicks might like him playing in the guard next year. We'll see whether Johnson goes pro or not. Great five in row finishing. Freeman got it to him. Well, to me, guys, that's the story of the game for the Hoyas. They have gotten the ball into the zone. And the only two teams to do it as effectively this year, Pitt and Louisville, are teams that knocked off the orange. Chris Wright checked out briefly. He's back in. <laughs> And Freeman picking up his second foul, third team foul on the Hoyas. Wright will replace Sanford, who gave John Thompson the third good minutes. Joseph back on the floor for Syracuse. Here's Jardine on the drive. Leaves it for Johnson. Missed the layup. Here's Wright in transition, made every right decision in the game and does it there. Georgetown by seven. It's their largest lead of the day. Jardine, no. Georgetown ball. Syracuse has not lost back-to-back -back games all year. They lost their last regular season game at Louisville, and they're trailing Georgetown today. Chris Wright spearheading a 17-2 Hoya run, and they lead Syracuse by seven here in the city. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by New York Life, helping keep your family safe and secure. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Kia Motors and the all-new 2011 Sorento. Learn more at Kia.com. Just want to update this one from the ACC. Remember, the winner of this game goes on to face the number one seed, Duke. And Duke will be playing for a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, perhaps. Virginia by seven with about six minutes to go. Dave. Georgetown job beat Duke, shooting better than 70% of that game during the regular year, and they're over 70% this half. Big reason why, Chris Wright. Well, you want a guy who's skilled at the lead guard, but you also want a competitor, and that's what this guy is. He's made perimeter jump shots with consistency today. He's found his way along the baseline against that zone. His ability athletically to create something from nothing at times, find other teammates, finish with contact. Chris Wright has been the entire package for Georgetown. 
funny. He's been fast and quick, but he's he's been slow in terms of seeing the game and making really smart decisions. Rounds has gone cold. Let's see offensively for Syracuse who steps up for them. They're down seven now. Clark hit the deck but hops to his feet. Shot clock at 10. Here's Freeman off the dribble. The lead is nine. Well, this is what you want. If you can't get the ball to Monroe, they have breakdown guys like Wright and Freeman to bail you out at the end of the shot clock. And by the way, Freeman's playing. You wouldn't know that he was recently diagnosed with diabetes. He's got 10 points in this game. Georgetown ball with a nine-point lead under seven to go. Very quick hands there by Monroe. He knew Jackson was coming back to the left side to make his move. Monroe calling for it. Yeah, he's working in the post. But because he's working, it's really making that Syracuse zone pay attention to him. Good hands by Trish. Syracuse don't, doesn't have numbers. Rotten's made the mistake there. Had a defender trailing. It will remain Syracuse ball, though, according to the possession error. As good as Andy Routens has been today, he's been on alert at times. He's got four turnovers, and a number of passes have been deflected that weren't turnovers. Anawaku back on the floor, replacing Jackson. Syracuse with one field goal the last six minutes. Guys, if Syracuse were to fall today, do you think that that endangers a number one seed in the NCAA tournament? I think it would depend on how teams like Ohio State and Duke do, Dave, in their respective tournaments. Johnson can't hit the jumper. Joseph way up there got the rebound and the stick back. Little full court pressure by Jim Beheim. Doris, do you agree with that about the number one seed if they lose? I, I'm not sure there's enough really good number two seeds to, to make it. I mean, it, it obviously gives it the committee fodder, but a lot depends on how it plays the rest of the way with the other teams. I just think they've been so consistently good, and you have to reward those teams who've done it over the long haul. What is the sample size they're looking at? I agree, Doris. I mean, they only have three losses. And only one away from the carrier, though. Shot clock at three. Great play again by Wright. 26 points for Chris Wright. How about the presence of mind of Monroe with the clock running down and nowhere to go with it? Joseph, no, but he's fouled. That last play, though, to me, for Chris Wright, typified what I'm talking about. He's one of the most competitive guys. He's got unbelievable competitive spirit. That basket was a toughness basket. Hollis Thompson picking up the foul, his second. Joseph at the line. Seventy-three percent free throw shooter, the Big East sixth man of the year. Syracuse shooting it much better from the line since conference play began in January. But not a great foul shooting team. A lot of that because of Jackson and Onowaku, who are both around fifty percent. Which all that means is you don't run your offense through them late in the ball game, it's similar to Dwight Howard. You just you simply you have to run your plays elsewhere late. They break pressure with Freeman. He'll take it all the way. Can't spin it home. But a good save. And a Syracuse foul. That's the 17 foul on the orange. First on Routens. Freshman Hollis Thompson will go to the line for the one and one. As we move late in this half, only four team fouls on Georgetown. Boy, if they could ever get under four minutes without getting Syracuse into that bonus, friend, that is an enormous help. This is the front end. Here's Routens off the screen, got it to Johnson. Johnson unable to score, but he'll go to the free throw line. Fifth team foul on the Hoyas. Monroe did a terrific job of rotating over on the screen and roll. He's not sure that he made any contact. Good decision by Andy Routens. Monroe picks up his second foul. 
Wesley Johnson from Texas originally was looking at Louisiana Lafayette. Started to improve and then ended up at Iowa State, transferred to Syracuse. A lot of people thought he'd be good. I don't know that anybody thought he'd be this good and ends up being the Big East Player of the Year. I had a chance to see him his first two years at Iowa State, Dave, and the thing that struck me about, uh, you know, he reminds me, remember Alex English? Yes. He's got that smooth gait, and he's the perfect zone player for Syracuse. Georgetown breaking pressure again, and Monroe fouled by Anawaku. Something that's gone on these last two possessions. Oh, boy. Anawaku, who missed the season because of injury earlier in his career, shaken up. No Brad Pike, the uh, Syracuse athletic trainer, racing down court to check out his ailing senior center. He had a knee injury in the 2006-2007 season. Such a key player for the Syracuse team, winning 28 games of school record during the regular year. Hard to tell if it happened on a contact with Monroe or when he landed. Now standing right over him, besides Andy Routens, is Scoop Jardine. Both of those guys missed complete seasons with injuries. Now the team doctor checking him out as well. Now, guys, this is big for so many reasons if it's, and we obviously aren't going to speculate on the injury, but if it's something that's severe because Syracuse really plays just seven guys. And now Jim Beheim coming down to check on Arenze. We hope this is not serious. But if it is an injury that is serious, it can obviously affect their seed. And again, not to speculate on the injury or the severity, but just to your point, Fran, remember Cincinnati, a lot of people thought they were the best team in the country, kind of like Syracuse this year. Then Kenyon Martin got hurt. They were not a one seed because of that injury. But again, we'll see. And uh, Anawaku helped now to the Syracuse bench. You know, this is why you have seven starters if you're Jim Beheim. In terms of its pieces, not only is it the best team, but it's the team that has what you would normally consider the requisite pieces, meaning point guard, shooting guard, two big bodies inside, long bodies inside. Uh, you're right. The great chemistry this year, your two best players, arguably, Routens and Johnson, are humble, unassuming guys. The fit has been perfect this year. There's uh, Dan Gavitt, one of the associate commissioners for the Big East, going over to some of the members of the Anuaku family. You'd imagine be able to go back to the locker room and see how Arinze is doing as Monroe is at the free throw line, shooting two, missed the first one. To get back to the game, what Georgetown has done in the last two possessions, they've been aggressive. You've got to make sure you stay aggressive here. Yes, you're trying to manage the clock in the game, but play to win. And that's what they did. The last two possessions, they're attacking still. Well, what I like about Georgetown, Doris, is they've attacked that zone from the very start of this game. They haven't settled for contested threes, and those were two good examples you mentioned. Jardine tried to hit Jackson, who finally gets the handle, almost walked. Monroe with a strip. Johnson got it back and puts it in. And now Johnson shaking up. Georgetown gets it down court to Thompson. Wild shot, but a foul on Jackson, his third. Johnson took a shot to the face. Watch the effort by Wesley Johnson inside. A lot of blue jerseys. That ball is loose. This is athleticism right here. Watch him scoop it up. Gets it up on the rim. I think it's Thompson that got him accidentally. Oh, 
Thompson missed the front end of a one and one earlier. This is a two shot situation. Well, that's three missed free throws by Georgetown here in the last 30 seconds. Looks like some blood on uh, Johnson's jersey there. But they're not stopping play. Yeah, the officials clearly don't see it. Missed another one. And Johnson almost had it taken away by Wright. Syracuse ball, down five. Joseph on the drive to the rim. Thompson fouled by Jardine. Jim Bayhunt wanted travel. Second personal on Jardine, 10 team foul. Well, take a look. Pressure defense. Here comes Jardine into your picture. That's a pretty easy call. Of course, emotions always run high between these two teams in this kind of a circumstance. That's a travel, isn't it? I think he got fouled. Okay. I think he got bumped. That was a good acting job. Thompson struggling at the free throw line down the stretch. You wonder if the emotions of the moment playing at the Garden for the first time as a freshman from Los Angeles are getting to him. As aggressive as they've been on the offensive end, Georgetown defensively, it's they're back on their heels. They need to get assertive and start being interested in getting some stops. Right now, Syracuse taking the fight to them. Hey, this is a smaller Syracuse lineup now with Johnson at the four. Monroe called for the foul. That's his third. Sixth Georgetown follows a team. No shocker that it looks like it's coming down to the wire for Syracuse Georgetown as they meet for the 13th time at the Big East Championship. One of the great rivalries in college basketball. Keep in mind now, guys, with Anuwaku out, Georgetown has four slashers out there. And obviously, Andy Routens could knock down threes as well. This is going to be a hard matchup for the Hoyas down the stretch. Jardine, 74% free throw shooter. Got 14 points now. Syracuse down just two. Starting to get noisy in the garden. A big alumni base for Syracuse here in New York City. Georgetown just breaking the pressure. Monroe, great play by Greg Monroe. And a Syracuse foul. Be opportunistic when you look to break the pressure. Take a look at what you have. Chris Wright surveys the situation first. Gets by the initial pressure with a pass to Austin Freeman with his size and strength. They've got numbers because they beat the draft and Mr. Monroe with a pretty adjustment. And four fouls on Jackson. Onuaku already out with injury. Michigan is trailing Central Michigan. Shot up next on ESPN. Quarterfinal action, the Big East Championship presented by New York Life. Villanova and Marquette met last year and went down to the wire here in New York. We'll see if it does again. Coming up next, after Syracuse and Georgetown. And tonight, don't forget, two games on ESPN at 7 Eastern. Pitt, Notre Dame, West Virginia, Cincinnati. After the Bearcats beat Louisville at 9 Eastern. Semifinals tomorrow. Greg Monroe at the free throw line. Georgetown leading by four. What do you guys expect down the stretch from both sides? Well, I like this lineup now for Syracuse. It's going to be an interesting uh, uh, way to see Georgetown guard four smalls and the big. You wonder if they get burned a couple trips. Do they switch the zone that was so effective against South Florida? Rodden's tried to force that pass, turned it over. It's his fifth turnover. And I talked to him before the game. I said, you getting that sense that it's coming down? He goes, I can't lose anymore, because if I do, it's done for me. By the way, Rick Jackson staying on the floor with four fouls. Arunze Onoaku, the update is a right knee injury. No uh, word yet on the severity. They're still evaluating. It was his left knee that cost him to miss the season in 06 07, but he's also had some right knee problems. And was last touched by Syracuse, eight to shoot for the Hoyas. It's amazing to me, the Hoyas, 24 of 34 inside the arc today, in large part because of Greg Monroe's passing ability. Robbins went for the steal, Wright gets into the lane. Tipped in by Freeman. 
He had a smile on his face as he tipped it in. And a timeout called by Syracuse. Well, this starts because of the penetration by Wright. Watch Freeman, 6'4", gets up over Wesley Johnson. He's a happy guy. Just had the sense in talking to the Georgetown coaching staff prior to the game that because of the second 10 minutes of the second half of that second game, they were so much more decisive and comfortable in how they wanted to attack the zone. And if Brandon hasn't always necessarily been just Greg Monroe in the pinch post, in the mid post, in the high post, it's been off dribble drives. Yep. Doris, you cannot beat the zone shooting three. Mm. You may get hot once in a while. But there's a when you play a zone, you demoralize it when you can get the ball as deep as Georgetown has today. And you can see the look on Syracuse's face in that zone. They know Georgetown has answers. Both teams shooting it great. It's been a terrific game as Jardine is fouled. That's the 17 foul on the Hoyas. The lead Syracuse by seven, but still a ton of time left. They get Chris Wright for the foul, his second. How about the Austin Freeman story, guys? He did not play against West Virginia. It was diagnosed that he had diabetes. They are continuing to monitor him throughout the game. They don't know yet whether it's type 1 or type 2, but they're always checking his blood sugars. He's also taking some insulin shots, but it doesn't seem to have impacted his minutes or his play whatsoever. I think when you think of the great athletes who have handled this disease, guys like Arthur Ashe and Joe Frazier, Jake Cutler now in Chicago Bears, it's a life-changing disease. But not necessarily not life threatening. Jardine gets them both. He's had a terrific game. 16 points. Trish back on the floor for Syracuse. Jardine to the bench. Of course, you remember Adam Morrison, right? When yes. he played at Gonzaga and took the insulin shots over on that Zag bench here. One of the more memorable little video I recollect in our careers here at ESPN. Good job handling the pressure by Georgetown. Georgetown three of seven from behind the arc this half and only three misses inside the arc. Here it is. Lob to Freeman, caught it and scored! It's the third way you can attack in the paint. We've said off the drive, off the pass to the interior to Greg Monroe or off the pass to the tin. Is that where they're missing on Oahu? They also still have Jackson on the floor, but he's got to be careful. He's got four fouls. Johnson in and out. Monroe had it taken away by Johnson. It goes right in and scores. Gets Syracuse within five. Timeout. That'll leave Syracuse with one. But because, guys, Jackson is four and Onowak is not in the game, is that impacting? How Syracuse defends around the rim, or is it just great execution by Georgetown? No, I, I think it's great execution by Georgetown. They had to finish the game with Chris Joseph uh, in the first game playing center. But watch this now. Watch the ball movement, but you got to keep your eye on Jackson and Monroe jostling inside. Freeman sneaks behind. Freeze it, guys. Look at this action here. That allows Freeman to get the lob. And Doris, again, when you talked about Chris Wright all day long, making great decisions. Perfect example right there. We've also talked all day long about how they put four blue jerseys on one side of the zone and that's another example they've got the classic way to beat a zone which is overloading it Georgetown this half shooting 71 percent from the field leading Syracuse by five oh he's trying to get in bounds right lost it oh they're going to say that it was last touched by Johnson they're electing to break this pressure with Chris Wright just trying to get open on his own. Here they break it with Freeman. He'll drive in on Jackson. He's got to be careful with four fouls. Monroe put it in. And the foul on Joseph. Freeman's 
Greg Monroe, lean of frame, but if you watch the middle part of this, he's going to clear a body right there against Chris Joseph. This is where Mr. Arunze Onowaku would have not been cleared out of space. Chris Joseph's frame's a little bit different than Onowaku's. You, you, know, you know what you got me thinking, Doris, on the press offense? John Thompson played for Pete Carrill. Princeton was always pressed back in the old days, and John Thompson has about 10 press offenses. They threw over the top again. Who's going to score for Syracuse? Both Johnson and Routens have gone cold. Will it be Joseph? He'll drive it on Monroe. Avoids contact but misses. Wright with the rebound. And then Wright lost it, but a foul called, and that's four now on Joseph. Chris Wright has impressed me, not just with his skills. I said he had a toughness basket earlier. That's a toughness rebound. Look at this guy. He is locked in. Well, I like what you mentioned yesterday, well, yesterday when you talked about the fact that Georgetown struggled a year ago in the Big East because they were not a mature team. Chris Wright, that was his first year as a Hoya in the Big East, and you can see the maturity level on the part of the junior from D.C. Guys, you see that high shooting percentage by Georgetown, Louisville, and its success against Syracuse. Are you starting to get concerned about Syracuse big picture in the NCAA tournament? Or no. No. No, because you better have players like Monroe, Wright, and Freeman on your team. Not many teams do. Is Wright misses the second one? Plus, these are conference opponents. Seen yeah. them for more than just the first time. And so hard to beat a team three times in one year. Here's Trish. Georgetown ball and a nine-point lead under 90 seconds to go. And great play by Trish. Numbers. Trish got the layup, laid down to seven. Remember, Joseph and Jackson can't foul unless they want to foul out of this game. And no Onowaku out with a right knee injury. He's not returned to the court. Right, lost it. Rodens has it. Numbers for Syracuse. Johnson into the lane. Here's Joseph. Hit it through. That's a four-point game. Syracuse calls its final timeout. Just when it looked like Syracuse was done, they get five points off of Georgetown turnover. The mindset this entire possession by everybody in the white jersey was three, Fran. They weren't looking to attack. Every catch that was made was to get a pass to this particular spot, the three by Joseph. Make sure to join ESPN for Selection Sunday. Tonight starts at 6 Eastern with Sports Center, then wall to wall coverage of the brackets at 7. Game day crew, Dick Vitale, bracketology, then at 9 Eastern. A story of what took place at Madison Square Garden when Reggie Miller lit up the Knicks. ESPN Films 30 for 30 series winning time. Reggie Miller versus the New York Knicks. Now, if you're Jim Beheim, are you going to get Joseph and Jackson out of the game knowing that you're probably going to have to foul? They don't have a lot of depth. They, obviously, they don't have the confidence in a James Sutherland. Mer Mookie Jones has been hurt. But that's going to be pretty precarious now, Doris, as you press with two guys with four fouls. Beth Mowens found out prior to the game that Mookie Jones is available. He's been out two weeks with that fractured finger, but he is, in fact, available. So you see Jackson out. All the guards, plus Joseph is the five man. Georgetown with back-to-back -back turnovers after stretching the lead to nine, which was their largest lead. Syracuse also led by nine in this game. Hey, I don't think you necessarily have to foul here if you can get a stop. They get it across. Clark to Monroe. He missed the jam, but he's fouled by Trish. Only the second on Trish. And Monroe not a great free throw shooter as Jackson will come back in. Chris Wright is holding his eye. Scary pass if you're a coaching staff. But he's still that right eye. Chris Wright is... Keeps, keeps messing with it. Doris, how about another press offense down at that end? Oh, way short with that one. 
When you go back to the days that John Thompson played for Pete Carrillo at Princeton, teams used to try to press them, Dave, and speed them up. Now, there's a contact yeah, issue. Yeah, it's, um, he, he just kept going yep. after that eye. It was like it was folded over. Greg Monroe lost the contact yesterday and didn't seem to affect him at all as he put it back. And Monroe needing to get a free throw here to get the lead to five. He's three of five of the stripe so far today. And as you guys know by rule, you can take as long as you want to put a contact back in and actually look for it on the court. Yeah, but he's icing his teammate here. <laughs> Greg Monroe saying, hurry up, big fella. And Georgetown, five of its last 12 from the foul line. And the uh, Syracuse contingency upset and again, patient, but as nope. you said, that's the rule. That's the rule. That should come with a disclaimer. There's people at home going, I don't want to see that. <laughs> and a great day for Chris Wright. One of the best games of his career, 27 points. Made some wonderful decisions in the half court as well as in transition. Missed them both. Syracuse ball down four. Here's Jardine. He'll get to the rim with the left hand. No, Monroe got the rebound. And fouled by Wes Johnson, his fourth. Every day, Georgetown makes their bigs handle the basketball every single day in practice because of John Thompson, the third system. You got to handle the ball. You got to be comfortable. Greg Monroe, totally comfortable coming up the floor. Missed his last two. Five point Georgetown lead. Biggies rookie of the year last year. First team all Biggies this year. Got them both. Syracuse out of timeouts, down six. They're getting to that point where they may have to shoot the contested three. Jardine drives in, missed the layup. Monroe got the rebound. Syracuse doesn't foul. Well, remember, Joseph won't foul because he had the four. But Jardine was right yes. there, and he could have fouled. Yep. Johnson just fouled out. It looks like Georgetown is going to advance to the semifinals. And Syracuse, if it doesn't come back, will lose its second straight game. And this could impact. One time they were being talked about as the number one overall seed. Will a number one seed for the NCAA tournament be in jeopardy now? And I think a larger impact, Dave, may be the status of a Rinzi Anawaku going into the NCAA tournament. We'll keep you updated on that throughout the day here at the Big East Championship. As mentioned, a right knee injury, but they're still evaluating its severity. Freeman at the line trying to make it a three-possession game. Well, if you go back to the opening minutes of the game, I thought Georgetown Doris had a wonderful game plan of attacking the zone from the inside. And in the three previous losses this year that uh, Syracuse had, team shot almost 60% inside the arc. Syracuse got a hurry. Jardine for three, good. Maybe too late though. Inbound Freeman. Fouled with five seconds left. Syracuse has never won the Big East Championship as a one seed. A decade ago, they were the one seed. Georgetown, the eight seed, and the Hoyas beat them. And it looks like they're going to do it again. Syracuse with Carmelo Anthony in 03, back when they had the division set up. They were a one seed and lost in the semifinal, but they won the national title that year. You know what was equally striking to me it was that they hadn't won the regular season Big East Championship, was it since 1991? Yeah, outright. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, that blew my mind. There you see how effective Georgetown has been today inside the arc. Great driving ability by Wright, passing by Monroe. Georgetown beats Syracuse for the first time this year. Back 
back-to-back -back losses by Syracuse. Georgetown at the Big East Championship has the most wins and the most championships, and they're going to the semifinals to play either Villanova or Marquette tomorrow. The Hoyas shoot 69% in the second half. Big John, it's hard for him to sit and watch, but once it's over and his son gets the win, it's a little bit easier, but just a sound game plan from Georgetown. So the eight seed advances, the Hoyas, tomorrow night at 7 Eastern on ESPN, will play the winner of our next game, Villanova Marquette. Hit Notre Dame tonight, West Virginia, Cincinnati at 9 Eastern time. Beth Bowens is standing by with Chris Wright, who had a great game with John Thompson the third. Well, Coach, how were you so effective at attacking that 2-3 zone today? You scored a ton of points in the paint. Uh, we just made a conscious effort to try to throw it in, to get the ball to Greg and let Greg make the decisions. I think between Chris and Austin and Jason, they did a good job of throwing it in and also probing and getting in there to kick it out. How would you describe the effort of your team in this second half? Uh, I thought it was pretty good, and it, it was led by this guy right here. I mean, we go as he goes, uh, and I thought he was terrific tonight. Chris, how important do you think it was that you've had a chance to see the zone twice before and now attacking it for the third time? I think it was important. Uh, we noticed we can get the ball in the middle of the paint, and then uh, we can create off of that. So I think it was important, and today we knocked down shots and got some key stops on the defensive end. What's going to be the key now for you guys to move forward from this point on? Just keep playing hard, man. Just keep playing hard and believe in each other and, uh, you know, let the rest handle itself. Coach, now you're facing the task now of three games in three days. What's going to be uh, important for you in the next 24 hours? We're ready. Get some rest. Get some rest and come out ready to play. Three games in three days. Our guys are ready. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Wright with 27 points and six assists as Georgetown. Knocks off Syracuse in the 13th Big East Championship meeting. Hoyas 91, Syracuse 84. Villanova is up next, taking on Marquette. And we'll be back for that. For Doris Burke, Fran Fraschilla, Beth Mowens, our entire crew. I'm Dave Pash. So long from the Garden for now. We go to the studio. John Saunders, Doug Gottlieb, Jay Williams.